Hey there, internet friends. Welcome to another episode of That D Plus Show. Class is in session for the only show from that nerdy site that lets you know what kind of quality to expect right from the name. I'm your host, Trevor Starkey, and each week we dive into a different Disney Plus offering and discuss its history, how it holds up, and our general impressions. If you like the show, we would love it if you like, subscribe, rate, review, share the podcast with your friends, all that fun stuff. Joining me today, we have Cameron Abbott. How you doing, Cameron? Hey, what's going on? What is going on? Uh, it's going to be a, a fun test case episode where we are sitting right, you know, back to back from one another or, or, or uh, right in front of one another. Uh, but we're going to see how uh, how audio handles this one. Uh, and and maybe this becomes a lost episode. Who knows? Uh, we will find out. But today we're going to be talking about The Simpsons Marge versus the Monorail episode. Uh, this is episode uh, 12 of season four. Uh, I picked this uh, for this week in particular because on Saturday, January 14th, uh, this episode will be 30 years old. It was originally released January 14th, 1993, uh, way back when I was a young eight-year-old. Uh, and yeah, um, other releases of the time we had uh, the X-Men animated series debuted in October of 1992, October 31st, 1992. The Kids' Choice Awards uh, debuted November 14th, 1992. Uh, we had uh, Star Trek Deep Space Nine debuted uh, January 4th, 1993. The first episode of Monday Night Raw was January 11th, 1993. Uh, basically yesterday, uh, as uh, we are recording this, uh, was the 30th anniversary of Monday Night Raw. And uh, a couple months from now, Beavis and Butthead will turn 30. Uh, Beavis and Butthead debuted March 8th, 1993. Uh, episode has a runtime of 23 minutes. Uh, in the Simpsons timeline of things, this comes between Homer's triple bypass, where Homer suffered a massive heart attack, and the episode Selma's Choice, where Selma takes Bart and Lisa to Duff Gardens. Uh, and I will always think of Lisa being, I am the Lizard Queen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our roll call here. Uh, we have the director of this episode is Rich Moore, who directed 17 episodes over the course of uh, his time with The Simpsons between uh, 1990 and 1993. Uh, and he has since gone on to direct uh, projects like Wreck-It Ralph, Zootopia, and Ralph Breaks the Internet. So made his uh, uh made the leap over into disney's side of things back before <laughs> disney acquired fox uh our writer here is uh conan o'brien uh this is one of the uh four episodes he wrote for uh including uh one of the ones we talked about uh, uh pff, like a few months back was the uh halloween treehouse of horror from this season as well um uh very kind of acclaimed Got his start writing on The Simpsons and then went into uh, Late Night. So, of course, has been doing all that talk show stuff since 1994. Uh, our core cast of characters here, Dan Castellaneta as Homer, of course. Uh, he's done 738 episodes of The Simpsons and counting. Uh, Julie Kavner there as Marge, uh, one behind him at 737. Nancy Cartwright as Bart uh, is uh, at 738. Yearly Smith as Lisa uh, is 736 episodes and counting. Hank Azaria as uh, Chief Wiggum and other characters in here uh, has done 727 episodes and counting. And Harry Shearer as Montgomery Burns and Smithers and a number of other characters uh, is another one for the full slate of 738 episodes. Uh, a couple other, uh, one of the other like recurring characters we have here is Maggie Roswell, uh, who plays Miss Hoover, as well as uh, uh, like Helen Lovejoy and Maude Flanders and stuff like that. Uh, she's been in 253 episodes and counting. Uh, we have the late, great Phil Hartman, of course, as Lyle Lanley in here, uh, who's in 52 episodes over the course of the series before his passing uh, between 1991 and 1998. And Leonard Nimoy makes his first uh, appearance in the series here. He would go on to be in one more episode a few seasons later, uh, which was a X-Files like parody episode kind of thing where he just kind of shows up at the end. Um uh, some trivia here, as we often do when we do Simpsons episodes. Uh, the Bart's chalkboard message for this episode is, I will not eat things for money. And the sofa gag uh, features a lot of the other characters and uh, res residents of Springfield filing into the living room uh, in rows. 
Uh, other trivia we have in the park scene near the beginning, uh, when Burns and Smithers are dumping a barrel of toxic waste. Go ahead and mute your phone, Cameron. All right. uh, <laughs> the camera pans past a tree that has a love heart with the letters M, B, and H, S. Is a subtle reference to say that Marge Bouvier and Homer Simpson were there long, long ago. Uh, in the brief shot, uh, we have a picture of the Hindenburg on fire uh, in the monorail carriage. Uh, that got a good chuckle out of Cameron this time when we watched it. Uh, the footage used in the episode for the Truckosaurus movie uh, featuring a sound like uh, Marlon Brando uh, was actually reused footage from the earlier episode, Bart the Daredevil. I remember thinking as we were watching, I was like, that looks like from a different episode. I like I feel like that was from something else. So saw that in here. Uh, George Takai was originally asked to guest star here in the Leonard Nimoy role uh, as he had appeared on the show once before. But he demanded several script changes uh, and ultimately declined because he did not want to make fun of public transportation as he was a member of the board of directors of the Southern California Rapid Transit District, now the L.A. County uh, Metropolitan Transit Authority. As a result, staff went to Leonard Nimoy, who accepted. That is wild. Yeah. That, that, that might be the most interesting piece of trivia you hold for this. Yeah. Uh, Conan O'Brien conceived the idea when he saw a billboard in Los Angeles that just had the word monorail on it with no other details or explanations. He first pitched this episode as a story retreat to Al Jean and Mike Reese, uh, who said the episode was a little crazy and thought he should try some other material first. Uh, O'Brien had previously pitched episodes where Lisa had a rival and where Marge gets a job at the power plant. Mr. Burns falls in love with her. Both went well. Uh, James L. Brooks absolutely loved this episode when O'Brien presented it. Uh, many, many years later, Conan O'Brien and Hank Azaria would pre perform the monorail song live at the Hollywood Bowl from September 12th through the 14th of 2014 as part of the show The Simpsons Take the Bowl, uh, where they basically did a medley of Simpsons songs. Uh, and this is the only time in the series where Lurleen Lumpkin is voiced by someone other than Beverly D'Angelo. Uh, for her brief appearance here, Doris Grau provides the voice. Uh, I highlighted that because in one of the few other episodes I've done that was like a Simpsons specific episode it was uh homer uh, the colonel basically uh which was the lurleen lumpkin episode so seeing her pop up in this one i was like oh fun kind of full circle this uh so cameron what did you think about this one revisiting this uh now nearly 30 years after its original release uh all these years later there's something very special about um the stank that conan o'brien puts on it <laughs> okay um just the level of just, just flair, drama, but in the like ridiculous range, range of like just like absolutely ridiculousness. The idea that three million dollars could build the monorail um, is very funny. Uh, I don't know. Maybe like it. It has been thirty years. Has inflation been that bad that like? I mean, especially for the the town that Springfield is. Uh, and the fact that they highlight, like, what, what is the point? Of, or uh, like Lisa says, her, her line of like, uh, you know, we, we have a centralized location. What do we need a monorail for? Uh, you know, it, maybe maybe they could have gotten it. I mean, also, obviously, Lyle Landley's whole thing is he's doing it super on the cheap. So he just takes as much money as he can and runs. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I absolutely love it. It's a fantastic episode of Simpsons. It's an incredible classic. Um, it's part of that, you know, that golden era that people uh, consider when they think of uh, The Simpsons. Um, and it has, like, one of the best songs, even though the song's super short. And it's a lot shorter than I remember it being. But there is just something so spectacular about Mr. Burns getting up with a mustache and like, trying to get them to give him some money back. Mm -hmm. And then Smithers, this is the thing that always, and this is, this is once again, this is a Cameron thing that you know. Um, as a child, I was really upset at the idea that they had an open canopy, like at the very top of their city hall building, that Mr. Burns and uh, Smithers was able were able to get out of. I was like, why is it open? Like, and that always bothered me as a kid. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah. Like the things that bothered me, you know. Uh, but overall, it's a, it's such a fantastic episode. Um, the the moment that I was like oh my gosh, that's the most ridiculous reason to, for that to have happened, actually goes to when the doc, the scientist, or like the guy from the other town, North, North Haverbrook. Yeah, Haverbrook. Um, 
say, like says, oh, we shouldn't have stopped for my haircut. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. Like that's just the most ridiculous thing. Yeah. I love, I love like the, the, even then, even 30 years ago, it's basically like a Werner Herzog character. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, he, he like the, this was a, a very fun, interesting episode to like revisit because obviously it is like one of the most iconic episodes in, in the Simpsons canon. And like the first chunk of it, where it is like, uh, Burns and Smithers trying to hide the barrel of toxic waste. I was like, did I start up the wrong episode? I don't remember this being like the inciting incident. Uh, uh, and so once it gets to, all right, uh, he's going, to, Burns is going to pay the fine of $3 million. How's the town going to use it? Oh, okay. That's where we get into the monorail stuff. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like, it's such a long setup to get to what like everybody thinks about of this episode. Um, my favorite like little throwaway things that end up coming out of this are, I so I have and I I somewhere over here in our in this office uh I have the virtual Springfield CD ROM game that ha- that was like the first attempt to map out Springfield mm-hmm. uh in like a 3D like realized space and I remember like playing in there and like the specifically it has you know, the the Tower of Popsicle Sticks, the elevator to nowhere, uh, like all of those little things that just like we have as the little sight gags at the end of this episode. Um, I remember like just having fun walking around Springfield in that game and like going to those places. And so seeing that they like all just come from like this one stupid episode is is a, is a fun little like, yeah, Springfield is such a wild town. Um, oh, shout out to Mayor Quimby, by the way, trying to be like, what are we going to do with the $2 million? You mean $3 million? Uh, yeah, $3 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, such a great, like, just remat- like, oh, yep, yeah, he's an absolute crook, and he's the best. Uh, just also, like, the fighting over him and Chief Wiggum that I forgot that they have, like, a subtle rivalry over, like, the entire show. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember I was like, oh, yeah, that's right, because, like, because Quimby is with the mob, and Wiggum, despite being a totally incompetent cop, still knows about the mob and is trying to deal with it. Um, and just it's because he's absolutely incompetent that he can't. Um, it's great classic play of the entire mobster episodes. Mm-hmm. And I have such a fantastic love for just uh, just the Simpsons do cutaway gags so much better than I think. Like these these early eras of the Simpsons do it so much better than I think the than the drastics like the drasticness of like a family guy um and just the idea of like oh yeah we're gonna go to the town charter da, 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 and then it like it gives us a break and then okay now they're at the town charter and they're reading it and now they're fighting over it and it's such a great way of playing with making you remember one there's no like you you don't think about the time that it would have taken for them to do that that doesn't matter it's not important um what matters is the gag and the gag, but at the same time as they're fighting over it, then our transition back to the actual plot is this, the the train going by in the background. And it's such a brilliant way of like writing transitions and animating the transitions through scenes that it's just so fun to, it, it Simpsons just at its best. It's fun. It's funny. You have great bonding moments of, uh, of Homer and Bart. Uh, and then one of my favorite moments is he's looking at Bart and does the classic old cartoon of the person you're looking at turning into, but instead of food this time, it's an anchor mm-hmm. and he just goes, think harder, Homer. Yeah. Um, that's fantastic. Uh, the, uh, the solar panel, <laughs> like when will they learn? Mm-hmm. The fact that the donuts end up saving the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, this it's definitely like I remember a I also had like the the Simpsons like CDs growing up and so I would like listen to the Monorail song on repeat and stuff like that. And uh and so yeah, it is very much like it's always wild realizing how much shorter of a song it is than than you think. Uh and and just even the premise itself, uh, like obviously it's the Music Man, but Simpsons and and the <laughs> whole thing of like 
the music man, but he gets away with it, kind of. Uh, uh, he gets away and, with it until he gets murdered. Yeah, yeah until until he he has a stopover in in you know Ogdenville or wherever. Uh, it's uh, uh, north. It's where March went. Uh, well, like I, I think, I think two of the the towns because it's it's what it's Ogdenville, it's North Haverbrook, and oh, Brockhampton. One. Is it Brockhampton? I think it's Brockhampton. Yeah, yeah. Like, and it, it, so it's putting them all on the map. And, she, yeah. yeah, she goes to North Haverbrook, and then he goes to Brockhampton. That's where his flight lands. Hmm. We interrupt. Also, classic. We interrupt this like nonstop flight to Tahiti with a layover in in uh, Brockhampton. Because Brockhampton, where have I heard that? Before? Yeah. Oh no. Oh. And yeah. they're like, there he is. F three. Yeah. And yeah. it's like, oh, it's so good. Like it's just, it's just ridiculous. It's silly. It's it Simpsons at its best before it it got too meta or took itself too seriously. Um, and it was just about having fun and making gags and making jokes. And but at the same time, it says a lot about like, hey, guess what? Sometimes infrastructure is super important, but having the right infrastructure is important. Mm-hmm. Also, it. Gave us the one of the first earlier glimpses of Lisa gets is a total pushover if you compliment her intelligence, because mm-hmm. um, that's all when <laughs> when the monorail guy like leans down and he goes, you know, you that's most like that's the most intelligent question I've ever been asked. You might just be the smartest. We might just be the two smartest people in this room, and that includes your teacher. Yeah, yeah. It, on, only us two would understand, understand the answer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um such a brilliant way and like 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 doing a little like not flirting but like you know the kid compliment like being like you're so grown up mm-hmm. um and getting her that way uh and just just it's so good um even though like marge is not like heavily against the monorail like i i remember her like when the comes when the name comes to mind it's like marge first the monorail or marge against the monorail you think oh she's like she's gonna lead a protest it's like no she just like figures it out but even then she figures it out but it's too late yeah. Um, yeah. Like, yeah. It's uh, like I I love I didn't remember how rabidly everybody in town got behind the idea of just fixing the potholes until Lyle Landley comes in and starts doing his whole uh, huckster routine. Uh, and and I love that it ends up being like grandpa being like, we could do all this. We could do all this constantly trying to get to the butt. But everybody gets so excited for it. And then I love that it turns from Marge's idea of fixing the pot rails to Grandpa Simpson's uh, uh, idea of, uh, of fixing the potholes. Which is instead of giving credit to women, it's giving credit to white old men. Yeah. Which is like... Yeah. A, a too, ju- too, too prescient. Too, yeah, yeah. It's so crazy because it's like that joke's so ahead of its time as far as like... Or rather, let me rephrase that. It's a joke that has unfortunately become timeless because it's something that just keeps happening. Yeah. Um. Like there's a sadness. The, the thing about it, I love about this episode also is like there's sadness to some of the jokes. Like some of the jokes get a little dark, um, but it, it just it has such a great flavor to it that it's just it's fun. It's funny, and I just I love it. I just think it's an absolute brilliant classic episode. Congratulations for thirty years. Um, yeah, the Hindenburg, the photo of the Hindenburg in the background might just be my favorite of it because it's just it's just it's too good. I mean, it's, it's an episode full of of just like absurdities. The fact that like the monorail has like a dining car and stuff like that for what they highlight is a minute trip around town kind of thing. Like the fact that it is such a to do that people are, you know, made made a day of it. You know, it, it brings out all of uh, Springfield's, you know, celebrities, including the uh, like Springfield 90210. Oh, that, that one got a good chuckle. Luke out of Perry it. type character kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that one got a chuckle out of him as well. Yeah. Um, just the the making fun of like, hey, he's 34, and then he smiles and it zooms in on his face and you see wrinkles, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Also, shout out to Rick Perry. Or not Rick Perry, sorry, Luke Perry. Rick Perry can burn. Um, why the hell? Why, why the hatred towards Rick Perry? <laughs> Wait, am I thinking of Rick Perry? Politician? Oh, oh. I mean, yeah, I guess you're thinking Rick Perry, the politician. I'm thinking Rick Perry, the Dimension 20 designer. Oh, no, no, no. That Rick Perry is still awesome. Other Rick Perry is the politician, former governor of Texas. Absolutely. Yeah. Indeed. Um, oh, gosh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Weird that I hadn't, like, put those two together. Um, 
But yes, um, I'm trying to think any other fun bits or or gags of this one. Uh, shout out to the uh, the the nest of like possums or whatever in the uh, uh, hanging out in the monorail compartment. I named the big one Bitey. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, any any other bits that you want to uh, give some love to before we wrap up? Quick uh, little episode yeah, this week. It's a quick little episode. It's one of the reasons why we're using the the past. Um, yeah, no, I think that it's, this is just still one of like the best episodes of all time. It does bring up there for me. It's iconic on so many levels and so many, in so many different ways. And it is just, uh, I think the last thing I want to say is Phil Hartman. Phil Hartman is like to this day, sorely missed. Um, I love it. Like where it was in radio, his bits on the Simpsons, SNL. Um, Phil Hartman was just such a fantastic, uh, comedian and, had just such an iconic presence and voice. And it's things like this are great ways to always remember uh, like how good of a guy he was as well and how tragic we are to uh, not have him today. Granted, right. he might be dead by now. <laughs> um, uh, I shouldn't have said that. Anyway, um, it's fine. Uh, like he could, but yeah. due to natural causes, like nice, blown up, bad anyway yeah yeah rip rip phil hart yeah indeed um uh yeah uh i think phil hartman is certainly an an iconic element of this episode and and one of those like obviously like we have the the joy of him as lionel hutz and um uh troy McClure, but then like the fact that yeah he comes in for this completely one-off character and it is just him doing uh harold hill from the music man kind of thing but it's it's the Phil Hartmanness of it that that brings it over the top and and just makes it uh, stand out, uh, stand the test of time as well. Uh, so shout out to that uh, um, report card from A plus to F. What do you want to give this episode of The it's, Simpsons? It, it's A plus. Easy like, A plus, yeah, yeah. Such an easy A plus. Just an absolute joy from beginning to end. Indeed. Uh, extra credit. Other suggestions. If you like this, uh, you have The Simpsons movie. You have. Uh, uh, and then basically a whole bunch of Simpsons shorts. Uh, the Simpsons meet the Bocelli's Feliz Navidad short that came out uh, these this last holiday season. Uh, you have the Welcome to the Club short uh, that is Lisa being uh, basically brought into the fold of Disney villains, kind of. Uh, we have the Simpsons in Plus Aversary, When Billy Met Lisa, The Simpsons Cross Bad Bunny, Te Deseo Lo Mejor, uh, The Good, The Bart, and The Loki, and play date with destiny. Uh, basically, we've gotten to the point that it has started knocking Simpsons shorts off the list. Like there are more shorts now than they have room to uh, to account for. Um, extra cricket, are you watching anything else on Disney Plus, Cam? Not right now, but it does look like the Bad Batch is going to be making their way back to my rotation. Mm -hmm. If uh, or rather putting it back into the rotation with season one, I never got past. Gotcha. Um, I uh, yeah, I, I sat down, watched, caught up on um, uh, the National Treasure Edge of History uh, episodes, uh, last couple episodes, uh, watch those um, as that series just continues to go like, all right, we're going into weird places. Sure. Uh, they made their way to the Alamo this last time around. Um, and then uh, I have uh, caught up the the first three episodes of the Bad Batch season two. Um, first two episodes were kind of like meh, I didn't re like they didn't really do anything for me. Uh, third episode's really good one, uh, really nice standout episode uh, that shook Cameron's uh, monitor to its core. Um, uh, for audio listeners, his camera shook. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, Bad Batch, it's like. It's fine. It's it is it feels early Clone Wars to me, but then there are moments where it's like, oh, that was a really good episode. Um, in particular, episode three, I think, was a was a really strong standout uh, of of this season and of the series as a whole, probably so far, because, um, yeah, I don't even remember much of the first season and I watched all of those episodes. Um, but yeah, um, Otherwise, that is going to do it for this episode of That D Plus Show. Quick one. Uh, sometimes uh, when there isn't a ton of new things, we just kind of I, I throw a dart at uh, Simpsons and this one it was. All right. This is 
uh, an iconic episode turning 30 yeah let's do that one sure um obviously only talking about a 22 minute uh, episode of a thing doesn't make for the longest of podcasts so uh, we'll kind of get in and out here very quickly. Thank you, Cam, for joining me to talk about it. You can follow Cameron at RevCabot, two Bs and two Ts. Anything you want to give a shout out to there, Cam? Yeah, shout out to everybody who get excited for our Game of the Year podcast that'll be coming up. Um, we had to do a little bit of a delay, uh, but it's okay because it gave us more time to enjoy and revel in the games from last year. So get excited for that. Also look for lists that are coming out on that nerdy site dot com, uh, mostly from Trevor. Um, he's put in that work, uh, doing that good work. Um, but look forward to mine. Mine will be coming out as well. Cool, cool. Uh, yeah, you can follow me at Trevor J. Starkey. Um, I will echo that. Uh, yeah, we were going to do Game of the Year this last weekend, but I was basically out uh, all weekend with a cold. So we had to postpone that. Um, it'll be me, Cameron, and Frank. No Logan this year because he didn't. He just didn't play a ton in the way of games uh, last year. Um, but we are going to probably do a movie of the year kind of episode in the same stylings uh this year um so uh he'll probably partake in that one and i imagine uh him and cameron will uh help make rrr one of our movies of the year uh here on that nerdy site so uh stay tuned for all that end of the year best of 2022 content uh including yeah as cameron alluded to uh, i've got a written thing up already on my favorite lego sets of 2022 um so stay tuned for more like that uh you follow all of us over at that nerdy site or go to that nerdy site.com for all the latest from us once again if you liked what you heard please like rate review subscribe share the podcast with your friends all that fun stuff as always, thank you for joining us. Stay nerdy, be good to each other, and class dismissed.